Hi everyone and welcome to the session that Brian Pat and I, Alex Sidorenko, are doing during the Risk Awareness Week. We hope you enjoy this session. Um, Brian, do you want to do maybe a quick introduction of your experience and then I'll set up the, the context for our discussion today? Thanks, Alex. Uh, I, I spent uh, several decades at Chevron, um, 25 or so years doing decision analysis on major capital projects, oil and gas upstream primarily, and then retired in 2016. I've been developing uh, training for decision analysis and doing some consulting um, using Monte Carlo rather than uh, decision trees. I'm also a director of Society of Decision Professionals and a fellow certified in that organization and work with several other organizations uh, promoting youth uh, decision analysis. So, thank you. By the way, the Decision uh, Professionals Association is uh, one where I'm also a member of, so I highly recommend it uh, uh, for anyone wanting to kind of to investigate and dive into the decision quality and decision making. Um, so, for this session today, we um, specifically decided to choose something very straightforward but il illustrative to give you kind of a feel to give all our participants a feel and by the way you know use this opportunity ask the questions underneath the video comment like um, share this page with everyone else on your social media uh, because it's going to be this you know, kind of as simple as it gets when it comes to quantitative risk analysis and yet it's still going to be amazingly powerful so what we have is we have a risk a risk of some incidents. And originally we started with um, an IT incident, but in reality, it could be any operational risk, any incident to the equipment or environmental incident or an IT incident, a cyber incident, you know, information security, anything you can, you can think of. Uh, the important part to remember is we have a series of events that can happen throughout the year and each of those events has some sort of consequence to the business. And uh, uh, we're going to measure that consequence in monetary terms. And then to mitigate the current risk exposure, we're going to consider a series of mitigations to reduce the risk exposure. And let's kind of let's see how it unfolds. Uh, stay with us and I think you'll appreciate the kind of step-by-step -step logic as we go through the exercise and I hope a lot of the things in quantitative risk analysis will become crystal clear and at least you'll realize it's not it's not that complicated. Um, Brian, do you want to add anything to the introduction? No, I think I'll have some comments as we start to go through this. Um... And, and you kind of get in the details. I think what we're trying to do here is actually teach you how you might be able to do this as opposed to, you know, a real case study that would be very elaborate and it, it looks really nice and you see the, the graphics that uh, might be informative, but you don't know how to get there. So this is really intended to show you how to do it uh, using Monte Carlo. And I'll also say that this could be done in any type of Monte Carlo, whether it's crystal ball at risk. I'm using SIP math here, or we, Alex and I are. Uh, it could also be done in Python or R, whatever you want to do. Absolutely. And the beauty uh, of us using SIP math for this demonstration is you'll, you'll discover in a second because it immediately updates and it, it's really very visual uh, of um, what the Monte Carlo looks like because we already run the thousand simulations behind the scenes and now we're just kind of demonstrating the, um, the the results and even by changing some of the inputs it re-simulates almost instantaneous which is uh, a fun thing so in our exercise we have a few unknowns for example um, we need some data on the cost of downtime and that's our first you know oranges orange cells are the data inputs uh, for us uh, it's basically missing information and we need to go ahead and